Hi, this is a video, a uh, tribute video to light middleweight Paul Williams who last week crashed his motor bike and was left paralysed from the waist down. Um, it doesn't look like he's going to make a full recovery from the injury. I know he um, had surgery on it at the end of last week, um, so it looks like um, you know he's going to be paralysed from the waist down for the rest of his life. But, <laughs> you know... Amazingly, he hasn't let it um, dampen his spirits. Um, he's still saying that he thinks he will um, return to boxing, you know, which is, you know, good for him. Uh, and he also joked, I think I read this week, he joked that he said uh, if he can't box again, he'll just uh, become a comedian or something, which, you know, so he, he must be a funny bloke. So I'm glad um, he's not totally, you know, uh, you know demoralised. Um, what can you say about his career? I was never one of these guys who said that after Sergio Martinez, you know, um, uh, beat him, you know, showed that he wasn't as good as some people might have thought. I wasn't one of these guys who came along and said he was overrated all along. I don't think that I think that Sergio Martinez beat him because he's so good, not because Paul Williams is overrated. Um, if we go back to about 2006, Paul Williams uh, made a jump up to sort of contender level when he fought uh, Walter Mathis, who was 25-0, and 0, I think. Um, Walter Mathis, he looked like he would be a good opponent, you know, 25-0. No, it was um, Paul Williams' step up in competition, so obviously it was a good fight. Um, but I don't think Walter Mathis went on to do much after that. So, so anyway, it was a good win for um, Williams uh, for a step up. Then he fought um, Shamba Mitchell, who had fought, you know, all of the um, big champions of the time, like Mayweather and Costa Zou, um, and he beat um, Shamba Mitchell. Um, I think that was in the fourth round. Um, also, I think it was Shamba Mitchell's last fight, so probably can't, you know, read too much into it. But I mean, again, you know, these were like Paul Williams' step-up fights. And he then um, dethroned WBO champ. Antonio Margarito, who was the WBO welterweight champ and um, one of the most feared fighters in the world. Nobody wanted a piece of Margarito back in the mid 90s, uh, in the mid um, 2000s, especially uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Um, back back in 2005, six and seven, Margarito was one of the most avoided champs out there. I mean, when he when somebody did finally have the fight with Margarito which was Miguel Cotto, the undefeated Miguel Cotto, he ends up getting beaten. But of course, you know, it's all academic now because Margarita has been proven to be a cheater. So we don't even know if he was winning those fights now, you know, without cheating. So I suppose it's quite a good thing that Mayweather didn't fight him in the end because I don't like seeing people cheat their way to victory. So, but anyway, he was one of the most feared guys at the time and Paul Williams beat him. Um, he then lost the WBO title to Carlos Quintana, which was, you know, incredible. I don't think anyone expected that. But he came back and stopped him in the first round in their rematch. And that reminds me a lot of um, Roy Jones Jr.'s fight with Montel Griffin in 1997, I think it was, when um, Montel Griffin beat him by DQ because Roy Jones hit him while he was down, uh, which is like, you know, a bit of a, bit of a weak disqualification. I mean, that happens quite a lot in boxing, just just by accident, you know, um, when you've got the momentum going. And Roy Jones, I think, said he couldn't hear the belt. Um, Roy Jones came back and stopped him, and that's how Paul Williams beat Quintana in just one round in the rematch. Um, then he went on to beat guys like um, Andy Cole, um, Velo Phillips, uh, Ronald Wright, um, you know, I mean, these were all like Ronald Wright and Verde Phillips were around the light middleweight division for years and they were two of the top fighters. So even though these, these two guys were at the end of their careers and Wright was coming back from about a two year layoff, I mean it's still pretty decent victories for him. Um, he also beat um, Kermit Cintron at light middleweight which was another you know good win for him and um, that that Kermit Cintron win was um, sandwiched between two fights with the middleweight Sergio Martinez. And again, he won the first fight against Sergio Martinez on a majority decision, I think. Um, I know that lots of people said that Martinez probably won that. But again, you know, Martinez won, you know, he lost. But 
if Martinez did win, it was because he's that good. It's not so much because Paul Williams is overrated. And then he had a rematch with Martinez where he got um, stopped in two rounds. But again, you know, that's because of how good Martinez is. Um, and after the um, loss to Sergio Martinez, he then fought um, Erislandi Lara. He, he returned back to um, light middleweight where he fought Erislandi Lara, Lara and uh, Thingy Majiga Ishida, um, the Japanese guy. Um, he beat Ishida very well. I, I actually thought that Ishida might win that one, and he beat Ishida very well. And I think the Lara fight, I think we can all agree that Lara won that fight quite comfortably against Williams. So, yeah, he lost to Quintana, but he did avenge it. Yeah, he lost to Martinez arguably twice, or at least once. And yeah, he definitely lost to Arislander Lari. But again, Martinez is one of the best fighters in the world. The Quintana loss was avenged in the very next fight in just one round. And Lara is like Williams back in the mid-2000s. In the mid-2000s, Williams was one of the most avoided fighters out there. That's why, you know, he, he beat guys like Wright and Phillips and all that, because a lot of guys wouldn't fight him, especially people like Floyd Mayweather Jr. Um, but uh, Lara is the exact same today. Loads of people avoid Eris Lara, Eris Land, Landy Lara. I mean, look at someone like, um, I don't know, maybe like uh, Saul Alvarez. Maybe... Um, Lara should get a shot at him, but he probably won't because he's too dangerous and not worth enough money. So anyway, if Williams doesn't ever fight again, which I think is pretty, you know, certain, he's got nothing to be ashamed of. He became the WBO worldweight champ after dethroning Margarito, who was on a win streak and was one of the most avoided fighters at the time, and he beat a handful of other very good fighters. Um, I don't think he's got anything to be ashamed of. He also, you know moved up the weights, he fought from welterweight up to middleweight, and he challenged everyone. The fact that they wouldn't fight him is, you know, not um, Williams' fault. I mean, that, that was the fault of other guys. Um, so I think Williams, great um, to hear him in good spirits. I hope he recovers, and if he doesn't, then, you know, I look forward to seeing him become a comedian or whatever. So, um, so I, I, you know, it's a shame what's happened to Williams. I. On a, you know, on a, on a similar note, I would hope, you know, because it was a motorcycle accident and because of how many boxers had been killed or injured in those sorts of um, ways, like um, uh, Salvador Sanchez, who died in a, I think it was a motorcycle accident. I think it was a motorcycle, not a car. Um, you know, I would hope that managers and families might try to keep them off of them because, you know, they are they can be very dangerous um, machines. So, you know, I hope Williams does well for himself and I was very glad to, to watch many of his fights. All right.